poke the eye. And why do you poke the eye? Poke the eye so that when you throw them out here, if you see out here, you see two fish floating, that's because nobody poked the eyes. Oh. They end up floating, the eyes swell up, it releases pressure, so they end up floating and they stink. When they're on the bottom, they, they rot out and fish come by and eat them. Circle of life. Yep, so what I do to start with is I, I sword fish, so I save this dolphin belly, they call it. Mm -hmm. So I take this right here. Now, could you use that for other kind of trolling applications? Like they uh, do for I like Bonita or whatever? Yeah, I imagine. Let me get on this other side of you. Yep. There you go. And then I come right down through here. It doesn't really waste any meat. Right. You're going you're gonna to get rid of that anyways. Mm -hmm. Now, do you salt these bellies or you just leave them plain the way they yeah, are? Yeah, just like that. Just freeze them. Okay. Okay. And that pulls right out of there, and then you got bone right here that you cut. You rig that up right there, and that's swordfish big. Our next episode will show the rigging of the dolphin belly for the swordfish. Okay, then you make sure the eyes poke. He's like, yeah, well, you're lucky in this video, buddy. <laughs> the trade secrets. Sorry. Yeah. Go right, right, down, thanks. right down the backbone. See you, bro. Yeah. And you can feel the knife going right down the backbone there. So as you can see, he takes the knife right down the, the bone. The and it stopped right in the center. Now what I like to do is keep the fish whole until you do all the centers because it lays flatter. Mm, good tip. If you take one fillet off, it doesn't lay flat. Oh, you're right. That makes a lot of sense. And it's and you, get, you waste a lot of meat. So then I come here where I took the coffin belly on. Where were you 30 years ago when I was learning how to do this the first time? Probably fishing. And then fishing or hunting. There you go. Fishing, hunting, or working. That's about all I do. <laughs> well, you have you some kids, the... so there must be something else hey. in between there. Nice. And then I chop these little bones right here just to make it come off easier. And then, and then do this side. A lot of meat right up in here is why I cut it at an angle. Uh -huh. Cool. If you wanted to make fish head soup, there's a lot of fat on this dog. Yeah. Yeah, especially the bigger bulls. There's a lot of meat right up in here. The bull is the male yeah, fish. Yeah, and it has a more square head. So these are cows? This one is a out. cow. This one looks like a cow. It's hard to tell on some of the small ones. As they get bigger, it's really pronounced. Right. See, that's all bone. Right. So you're just laying it on top of the bone and then you come in here to the rib cage. And you take and just As you you can't really see it but he's kind of just taking the knife right on top of that spine. Yeah, the, the spine has got the little humps in the bone. So you just wiggle the knife and it goes right over them. Yeah, you might be able to see that before the video. Just do it you guys know. I've never seen anybody fillet a fish like this or a dolphin like this. And it makes a lot of sense um, as he explained it to me. And I was like, well, I want to definitely yeah. sh share this with you guys. And then what I do, most people pull the skin off. Mm -hmm. And it leaves a little membrane right, on it. Right, right. I like to 
to lay it off and get rid of that membrane. It kind of yeah. looks like a spider web if you guys have yeah. ever seen it. And we'll do a video where we show you what that looks like. Yeah, everybody else take about everybody take the skin off. This way you got pure meat and all that shit left on it. But you can see the bloodline that I cut out at right. 45 like this afterwards. Right. And that's why I do it. Most people will just take and stake that. Right. And cook that. And then when you eat it, you can either cut it or you can either eat it or cut it off. I like to make it easy to cook. I cut it all up into pieces and shrink wrap it all. Uh -huh. So my wife or daughter, whoever takes them out of the freezer, they're ready to slap on a pan and cook. You don't have no prep, there's no bones, there's no nothing in it. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people don't take the time to, to get the fish ready or, you know, I have friends that do scalloping and they do a great job of cleaning the scallops for their customers. Because if you never did it, what happens is a lot of times people will just, they'll give up after a while. And it's a wasting of our resource. So you want to make it as user friendly as possible. That's why I make a lot of my deer into sauces because if you've never had venison, it's a great way to start. And uh, especially up there in Madison County, L&W Processor makes the best smoked deer sausage on the planet. So. Yeah, I got all my daughters, wives, everybody um, eats all the deer meat we get. But I have it processed in the onion steak burgers, pre-made patties. So all you do is pull them out of the freezer, throw them on the grill, and they love them. Right. And this is people that wouldn't eat five years ago wouldn't eat a deer. Right. Nothing to do with deer, and now, right. um, now they're eating it every, a, almost every night. My daughter will only eat the stuff that we kill. Right. You know they're into the healthy, organic. You can't get more grass-fed than this that. Is, this is pretty organic right here, and the deer deer is the same way. Yeah, you want grass fed. If you said it was deer or anything, they wouldn't have ate it. Now it's now it's the right thing to do right. in the world. So. Well, we're well, finally coming around. Yeah. Finally coming around. Okay, and then you do the rib cage. Come around this time. Do the rib cage once again. Just gets all them bones. And you try to save as much meat as possible, but you care more about getting the bones out. And then I come in here. There's nothing that will turn somebody off to fishing or eating yeah. fish by biting into a bone. <laughs> so we're trying to introduce our, our kids no and blood line. out there. Perfect. And I take this and I cut it at a big angle. So when he cuts at that 45, what he's doing is actually, you can see in the fillet. This is the bloodline. The, the, there you go. And it, you can eat it. It tastes, tastes okay. It's just different, and a lot of people don't like it. So I cut it out, and then there's no questions asked. This one I cleaned a little closer. The rib bones are gone, except these couple right here. I can hear the rain coming. Yeah, it's definitely coming. And these dolphins are the fastest growing fish in the ocean. See all that bloodline gone. Mm -hmm. And there you have it, a nice, clean. What I do is I cut it here and there, and that'll feed two people. Awesome. <clears throat> So that's a quarter of that dolphin will feed two people. You want to tell the folks who you are? I'm just uh, pretty much a local to Florida. I come down here every year. My name's Bobby Marr. I come down here with my family lobstering and fishing. Born and raised in South Florida, one of the few. <laughs> well, Bobby, thanks for sharing yeah. today. This is this is great footage, really educational, and I think a lot of people are going to start eating more dolphin because of your video. So thanks very much, cool. Bobby. Yep. Have a great day. Go get them.